Amen. Standing ovation is at least what he deserves. All right, any of you agree with that? Praise God. A little more line, please. So that's straight. Check, test one, two. Is that okay? Is that too loud? No? Can you hear me back okay? Okay, so they're saying, they're saying turn it up and back. Okay, better? Yeah, it's getting better. Okay. All right. Not too loud? Okay, good. Turn up even more. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise the Lord. I often, I often wonder, you know, we use technology like this, you know, and, uh, you know, Jesus preached to the multitudes. The multitudes, by one account, um, you know, they talk to my understanding of, of Israel, Israel account, when you see that he preached to like the 5,000 or whatever, you know, when they counted it by the men, not taking into account the wives and the children. And on average, my understanding is that, you know, there's two children per household, perhaps even more. But if you take into account, so if you preach to the 5,000, you take into account then the wives and the children, that's like 20,000. You get that, right? Like 20,000 plus. You get that, right? I'm thinking, what kind of microphone did he use? I just think like this sometimes. You have to bear with me. I think like this sometimes. But uh, powerful story. Amen? God's grace and His mercy and God's love. It is a command. His love. It's a command. Lux and I were talking about earlier, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the attorney when the lawyer came to him and said, what's the greatest, what is the great commandment, what's the greatest? That was Jesus' response, to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Well, I tell you, it's uh, been fun to be in your community, come back down. What we witnessed yesterday, I'm sure you've already got an account of of what happened yesterday, and uh, certainly uh, just humbled to be a part of it, and see what God's doing, and uh, in the spiritual realm, the spiritual sense of things, the physical sense of things, as Lex already addressed, and uh, that's uh, kind of funny, the Lord has really opened up some doors for Lex and I, you know, he was known as the total package, and the interesting thing is that that's evolving more now in our lives now and even on the screen you know we tried to show the clips there but uh you know it's evolving even more now and uh so it's just interesting to me you know my my briefly just my story briefly is if you haven't gathered by now you know and if you've watched my wrestling career you you Perhaps you've made a note to self that I'm probably not really from Russia, right? You figure out what I'm something, you know. I had a woman come to me yesterday, she's like, 30 years, 30 years I believed you were from Russia. Tell me what you're talking about. Well, that was my job, you were supposed to, you know. It was my job, so. And somebody perhaps came in and quite thankful. And I don't talk like this. I said, hey, I want to preach the word of God to you tonight. As you go on, how are you going to show me stuff? I don't know. You know, I wouldn't understood what he, what he said, right? And, uh, but that was part of the one. That was part of the part of the, the character that I portrayed as the Russian nightmare, Nikita Koloff. And spent many years in that industry. It was very fortunate to win many championships and wrestled against him, wrestled with him, uh, but much, much more pleased on tag teaming with him now and what, what we're able to accomplish now, and not for our own personal goal, but for the goal. So I'm just, I'm just very humbled by that, as he and I Travel. It's funny how God can kind of take you full circle, you know, in, in a sense. In a sense, once you recognize your need for Him, and then your willingness to surrender to Him, how how uh, how He'll kind of take you even back uh, in, into the circles. Uh, I was having uh, lunch with a, a friend the other day, just sharing with him some of the things that God is doing uh, uh, with Life Stein, and, and it was. Uh, Quite interesting, he said, you're having a Moses experience. I didn't have a chance to even tell Alex this yet. 
Uh, he said, you're having a Moses experience. I said, you know, he was in Egypt, you know, for 40 years, right? You know the story? Then sent to the backside of the desert for 40 years. You know the story, right? Then brought back into Egypt, right? To bring deliverance to, to God's people. And, uh, you know, we were uh, blessed last weekend to be in Atlanta where the world of wrestling was focused on the world of Atlanta. Uh, in the wrestling world with the Hall of Fame inductions and WWE and then of course WrestleMania and the Georgia Dome and, and uh, so we were blessed to be able to attend some of those events and hang out with some of the people in the office, the front office of WWE and, and uh, so it's like, you know, we were in that industry, then God has been discipling us and raising us up and, and then bringing us back together to go uh, back into that industry per, in a sense, but to be around those, some of whom we used to wrestle with, like the Stone Cold Steve Austins and the Diamond Dallas Pages and some of these guys, to be able to come back in and just even whether it's with our words or not, just be a living testimony of the grace and goodness of God so that they witness and see the changes in us, whether we ever open our mouth or not. <laughs> There's a challenge for somebody today, today right there. Here's your challenge. You want a challenge? Let me give you a challenge. I've come to challenge you this morning. Let me give you a challenge. Go out there today. Go out there today. And, and the challenge is you can't open your mouth. You cannot open your mouth and use words and go lead somebody to Jesus.
just gave lip service to it. But we actually went out there and just lived. We lived the Christian life. We lived being a follower of Jesus. I didn't grow up in the church either. Nor did I grow up in Russia. Ah. So I didn't grow up in the church in Russia. I didn't grow up in the church in Russia. Or, or in America. I grew up in Minnesota. Minnesota <coughs> one of I was raised here in Minnesota. It was after I left wrestling. And sometimes he shares the story about when he heard I left wrestling that I lost my mind. I was only 33. So relatively young. By wrestling standards, going into what many are considered the peak or the prime of a wrestling career. 30s and even 40s and for some even their 60s. Don't mention any names. But anyway. <laughs> but I walked away from it. And he and many other peers in my wrestling industry mocked me and made fun of me. He would have told he tells that story sometimes. And, and you know, when I walked away by choice, I, you know, I didn't know at that point in time what the future would hold. I was contemplating the future. And I'd had this, by some people's standards, successful career in wrestling, you know, name face, notoriety taken around the globe because of satellite technology and et cetera, and, and this sorts of things. And, so I'd had this uh, successful career and, and yet chose to walk away from it, not knowing what the future would hold, but contemplating the future at, at the age of 33. And what does life hold for me next? And it was just a little less than a year later that I found myself in a wrestling match of a lifetime, not in a squared circle, but in a church, in a church. And it was in that church that I made a decision to walk an aisle, not to meet the nature boy Ric Flair or anyone else in the squared circle, but it was to meet the, the, the real champion, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. October of 1993, I gave my life to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And it was that decision that brings me here this weekend. It was that decision that has led me to over 20 different countries. It was that decision that has given me the opportunity to speak in hundreds of churches. It was that decision that's given me the privilege of ministering to thousands and thousands and thousands of people around the globe, people of all ages. And now to reunite and tag team with my dear brother of the Lord, with my dear, dear friend that I love so dearly, the total package like Sluger. It's, it's that, it was that decision on that day that changed and, and touched and transformed my life. It was on that day that I gave my heart, my life to Him. It was on that day that I surrendered my life to Him. It was on that day that I yielded my life to Him. It was on that day that I committed myself to Him. Amen. On that day. See, that's the tough challenging part for all of us. Those words I just mentioned, many times we don't, we don't want to hear or receive those words. Yield, surrender, commitment. We can even be preached the word of God and we'll justify why we do what we do contrary to the word of God. Pastor and I were talking about health and wellness and to a lot of other pastors who disqualify themselves from ministering the word. Not even other, it doesn't have to be a pastor, but you know, we're just talking about 927, how, how you discipline your body, you bring it into subjection, lest you disqualify yourself. And of course, they'll throw up for Timothy 4 8, that bodily exercise profits little. It seems like justification, because the key is it's still profits. <laughs> Now, really, the right one says, because like we were talking yesterday morning, we are talking to a group of, of folks about taking care of the temple, and, and we told them, hey, 80 plus 20, you know, exercise is only 20% of healthy living. But see, then you take, you take the, 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 the physical examples and you apply that to the spiritual. You know, God began to explain to me, I spent, I spent 40 years in the gym working out, 40 years, celebrating my 40th anniversary taking care of my body. And then God began to use that physical example and say, now, Nikita, 
You know all that discipline you show to get up every day and go to the gym and work out and, you know, to lift weights and to do kind of that, take care of your heart and all of that. He said, now, I want you to use those same principles, the same discipline and those same principles and begin to train your spiritual muscles. Begin to renew your mind, Romans 12, 2. Don't be conformed any longer to this world. Be transformed how? Who knows it? Not the pastor. Who knows it? The renewing of your mind. Very good. Pastor, you've done well. What well, door 14 of them knew that? That's good, Pastor. The renewing of your mind. You see, your mind's like a muscle. You have to exercise it. That's why you've got to be in the Word of God, reading the Word of God. So I spent 30, he spent 47 years, I spent 34 years filling this mind, these eye gates, and these ear gates with all kinds of junk. <laughs> but I know that's probably just him and I, probably none of you, I'm sure. <laughs> you have virgin eyes and ears, I get that, yeah. Come up, I'll pray for you later, you're lying in the hand you want. <laughs> Letting jump into these eye gates and ear gates and polluting my mind. So God's been teaching me how to renew my mind through the Word of God. By getting in the Word of God. By reading the Word of God. By writing the Word of God upon the tablet of my heart that I might not sin against Him. Amen. Amen. I'm to be a doer of the Word, not just sit on my duck on Sunday morning and be a hearer. But how to receive what's said from the Pope and apply it to my life, go out there in a dying, dark world and be a light and just live what this word. He said, the architect of our life, the blueprint was written for you and for me. He made a reference to owner. 